Hello, this is Kai from New Electronic Frontier and Modulo Wednesday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about an envelope or an ADSR in our particular case. So in the first two episodes, we talked about a VCO and which waveforms he can do. And then we applied with a sequencer and um, external MIDI 2 CV signals um, the means of uh, playing the VCO kind of musically. However, what we are missing is the typical yeah, let's say intonation that usually uh, we have if you play a natural instrument like a keyboard. So let's hear again. I programmed the sequence in a way that there comes out musical notes. Okay. You can hear that, but still the problem with this is it's actually like on one sound level all the time and it sticks there, it just changes the pitch. So this is not very musical and this is not what you know from, from you know, usual music scores written with a synthesizer. So the piece that's missing is an envelope and <clears throat> an envelope resembles in a synthesizer system that what happens with a natural instrument. So think of a piano, okay? So with a piano, you hit a key and um, by determining how hard you hit the key, the sound of the piano is, can be very different. Also, how long you hold the key and when you release the key makes a difference to the piano sound. And what we do with an envelope is actually we rebuild this sound in our synthesizer system to play the sound of the synth more um, in a natural way. And um, we're needing two modules actually for this. Um, and we're gonna go brand VCV. And the first one is for sure an ADSR. And I will come to the details of an ADSR in a moment. And the second module we need for this is actually a VCA. It's a voltage controlled amplifier. Um, so an amplifier for itself does exactly what it says. You put in a signal and you can make it louder or, or, um, or um, calmer, you know, so um, less loud. Um, so a VCA per se, uh, you know, is for mixing stuff. That's, that's okay. But the thing is that we can control what happens to this register here, right? Where you can make it louder um, with control voltage again. And then actually the ADSR, and I explain the envelope on detail uh, soon, can actually apply this curve to this register. So it would be actually like you would shift the register very quickly by hand, which you cannot do, um, to create a sound. We come to this in a moment. So let's switch over to my drawing pad here and I will explain a bit on how this actually works. So ADSR. So on the one X axis, you have the amplitude amplitude of the sound and on the other we have time okay so what happens now is and again imagine the piano key as an example if we have this line here up until this point and this is actually the a in all that and is called the attack the attack starts at the very moment you press the piano key and the attack rises up until the point of highest amplitude, okay? So you hit the key, it rises up to this point. Um, so imagine if you hear a very slow developing sound, it has a very long attack time. If you have sounds that are like directly there when they are triggered, you have a very short attack time. So then comes the second phase and that's the D phase. And that's usually a bit shorter. And the D phase is for decay. The decay actually kicks in when directly when the amplitude reached its maximum. So you hit the key, the maximum amplitude of the signal is reached, and then the decay kicks in directly and goes down to a level of the S 
which is the sustain. The sustain is actually um, hold it as long as you keep the key pressed. Okay, so there the piano example lags a little bit because a piano has a, a certain uh, swing of the string, right? And this is will be released after a time. So you cannot hold it forever. With a synthesizer, as long as you hold the key and you have a very, very long sustain time, you can basically hold it for a very long time if you like to. So, and then the last point is, as I just mentioned, the release. Okay, and the release kicks in when you let go of the key. Okay, so even if you let go of the key, there's a phase where the sound is released to, to form it. And now, as I said, for this particular case of today, we use an ADSR. There is also other envelopes out there. So for example, you sometimes just use an AD envelope, attack and decay. So this is, for example, very useful for uh, percussions um, like kick drums, snare drums, etc., where you really fast hit the attack time and then the sound just decays and there's not really a sustain or a release. Uh, as well as with keyboard sounds, uh, with lush pad sounds, for example, you just play around with a whole curve of, of all of that uh, parameters, etc. So really depending on what sounds you want to craft, um, you can set in different parameters. Okay, but now let's take this into, uh, into action in our system and let's see how hard it goes here. Okay, back to the screen. So now we have our ADSR. So what happens? First of all, um, we need to make sure now that we get the VCA uh, into work. So what we do is we take this square wave out and put it on the input of our channel mixer. Okay. And then we take the channel mixer output back to our scope. And now again, you hear pretty much the same stuff as we heard before when we put the we see how it put directly to the scope, so nothing so much happening. So, but now, as I play around on the amplitude slider here, you see I can actually, you know, influence the amplitude, how you would imagine. Now our ADSR comes into play because we want to form the sound. But what we need first is we need to trigger it, okay? So the ADSR needs to know when to start, and in sequences, you usually find a trigger or um, a, a gate, it's called, and you put this into the gate input here. And at this very moment, you see this lamp is here blinking now. So the trigger is kicked in, kicking in. You can also see that the release is blinking here. And here you now have the envelope output and this we put to the CV in of our channel mixer. And what happens now is that we hear nothing at all because our attack is very long. Let's just make it shorter. So now you can already hear If I have everything very, very short, it's, a, it's an extremely percussive sound, right? So you can see if the attack is very short, um, the Amplitude is already there, so it's a more like aggressive sound. If you dial in a bit more attack, it gets more lush. And you can just play around with the other levels. And if you dial into extreme,
can hear you can really now craft very different sounds with this, right? What's important is actually when you play around with it, you have to make sure that the trigger interval and uh, the sound settings on the ADSR match a little bit, right? So if you have a very long release time, everything is mushed up as we had it pretty much before we actually used the ADSR. If you have a very long attack time and pretty short release times, it possibly is that you cannot hear because when the attack is fired, it just doesn't get enough volume out of it because it gets re-triggered by the tempo because every time a trigger comes in, it fires the um, ADSR again. And this means that you cannot hear something if it's dialed in too long, right? So you really got to play around with it because this is how you can craft a lot of songs, uh, a lot of sounds with your VCOs. And it's Pretty nice, actually. Try really short times, try really long times, play around, use different oscillators, uh, oscillator settings, and see where it brings you. Because the ideas are, <coughs> or an envelope in general, is a very, very um, important tool to form your synthesizer sound. Okay, so one other thing we can do with ADSRs, which is not topic of today, is you can also use it for filters. But for that, we need filters first. And this is around in the next episode. We'll talk about filters and how to use them within this particular setup. So thank you very much. That was Kai from New Electronic Frontier and Modular Wednesday. Um, hope to see you back in the next episode about filters. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye-bye.